Welcome, going carnivore in Thailand. Hello, hello, hello. Thank God this water feels so good. It has been so hot in Thailand. Even up north, it is actually hotter up north than it is down here in more southern, below Bangkok instead of above Bangkok. I'm going to make a lot of video content. I have got stored up, but I haven't taken time to edit it yet. I am going to edit it somewhat today. Promise. Now that I'm back in the pool villa, I got to exercise today. I exercise, I exercise, and I feel great. This water feels great. Last night, I tried to eat a steak. I only ate half of it, maybe, maybe two thirds of it. And I was full. And I said, okay, I'm done. I'm full. Noi had a steak. Those were two of the ones that we took with us and brought back. So technically we sous vide them for about 24 hours. And then we seared them real good. And then we took them with us after putting them in a food saver and vacuum shrink wrapped them. And then I guess five days later, while kept under refrigeration, we brought them out. We put them back in the sous vide for about, I don't know, three, four hours at 57 degrees or thereabouts. You can put it at 56. You don't want to go higher than what you cooked them at because you don't want them to actually get pinker. And they would, they w I mean, not pinker. Did I say pinker? I meant you don't want them to get darker. You don't want them to go closer to medium or well. So you put them at 57, leave them in there for four hours. They come out. They're as hot as, as if they came out of that I mean, they're, they're hot, but they're not sizzling hot. I mean, you know, they ain't sizzling like it just came off the sear. But uh, it was good. Not quite melting your mouth tender, but very tender. Uh, I'm sure it would have been better if we would have seared them and ate them right after searing. But if you're taking a trip and you want to, and you've got yourself a cooler, and some ice, you can use your vacuum sealer and seal up pre-seared, pre-sous vide steaks. And then you can just put them back in the sous vide when you're in the hotel room and you can eat them. And in our case, we brought two steaks back and we used them last night. Now, as far as steaks go, let me tell you about Songkran. It's a big, 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 big holiday weekend. And it goes from the 13th to 15th, but people started celebrating it on the 8th. And on the 13th, everybody everywhere throws water on everybody everywhere. And it's just another excuse for Thailand to take a holiday. Well, let me tell you, shit don't get done on Sakai. If you have a problem, you're not going to get a technician to come out and look at because they probably went home. Now, here's the thing. If you live near a big city like Bangkok or Pattaya or the island of Phuket, you know, a lot of the people who are service people in that location actually come from their hometowns, which is in the rural areas. So when they get a vacation or a holiday, they all jump in their cars and they head back to their hometowns or they jump into a bus and they head to their hometowns. Uh, here in Thailand, between towns, like if you wanted to go to Udon Thani from Pattaya, a lot of people would get on a bus and take a 12 hour bus trip. 
and that's the way they travel. It's very inexpensive, and people will do that to go back and see their families because families here are hugely important. As Donald J. Trump would say, hugely important. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible imitation of him. Anyway, we can't get anything done, including the fact that yesterday on the way back, I asked Noy on the way back. And uh, I said, let's place an order for 16 ribeyes from our supplier, which is this farm up north. And... Uh, she said they can't get to them till after Songkran, which is like, oh, I don't know, five, six days away now. It's going to be after the 15th for sure before they'll even start to process them. And uh, so we went to our backup supplier. I said, well, let's get a couple of steaks for our backup supplier then. And the backup supplier says, well, we're leaving for San Cran tomorrow, but we got a few thin steaks, only three centimeters, not five. So I think we ordered two and that's it. We'll just eat pork and chicken and maybe some liver, maybe some salmon, you know, some fish. Nobody loves her fish. So that is going carnivore in Thailand and the issues you have that may be slightly different than where you live if you don't live in Thailand. But uh, I feel great. And I feel better than great. And I'll tell you one little tidbit before I go. I used to suffer very badly that if I sat too long during a day that my ankles and my lower calves would get water retention and they would actually swell up more than a little bit. Since going on carnivore, I spent about 11 hours in the car yesterday and my legs weren't swollen and my ankles weren't swollen. That must mean my circulation's better by eating good, healthy nutrients that my body can use. And what I eat yesterday, I had maybe two bites of chicken, two hamburger pies from McDonald's with cheese off their a la carte menu. And uh, I had that two thirds of the steak. Here's an interesting thing. The people here in Thailand, service is unbelievable. We couldn't find a McDonald's on the way from from uh, near Padilla up to Udon Thani. You can't find a McDonald's on the side of the road. They're just not around. So we were in uh, Quarat, I think it was called. And Noi looked on her phone and found a McDonald's, but it was in a shopping mall about two kilometers off the side of the main road that we were on, number two. So she called them on the phone, placed her order on the phone, told them what she want, and they said, well, come on by, just pull down the street to where you we're in the mall. You pull on the street in front of near the KFC, a little bit further down the, than the KFC that you can see. And we'll run them out to your car. And uh, they ran them out to the car to pay for them. Noi used the banking app to scan this guy's telephone and transferred the money to pay for him. We gave the guy a tip and he brought him to the curb from the inside of a shopping mall. And then we continued on our trip.
Now I'll tell you what. Noy could could talk you into buying a grass shack in the middle of a burning forest fire. She calls out of the blue at McDonald's. First off, how often does McDonald's take phone call orders? And second off, how often will McDonald's located inside of a shopping mall, take a phone order and then deliver it to the curb of a busy downtown street. I'm telling you, tidbits from Thailand, but you don't get this kind of service with a smile in the United States. You just don't. It's just incredible.